Hello and welcome to a TV44 in the community special. I'm Jennifer Beck and I'm excited to introduce you to Delphus Jefferson senior Lizzie Chung. This 17 year old's life has never been typical. She grew up alongside her father's declining diagnosis of MS, serving as one of his caregivers. Her dad took his final earthly breath in the summer of 2018, the summer before her freshman year in high school. And since then, the Chung family has been living Genesis 50:20. That scripture says, you intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. Lizzie is definitely inspired to save lives. Just take a listen to all she has already accomplished and all she yet plans to do. I am with Lizzie Chung, 17 years old, going to be a senior at Delphus Jefferson. Yes. Also a senior in college. Correct. <laughs> so let's start talking about the amazing things that you have been doing for the past few years. And let's start by talking about this whole, you're going to graduate from high school right. in spring of 2022, and you're going to graduate from college at the very same time with a bachelor's in science and biology pre-med degree. Right. Absolutely. So this all kind of started, um, I should say that my journey really kind of starts with a certain event that occurred before I was born. And that was that my dad was diagnosed with primary progressive multiple sclerosis in 2002. And then I was born in 2003. So um, I was very involved in his care, um, you know, changing him, feeding him, organizing his medicine. And I often traveled with my parents to doctor's appointments. And um, I would say about a year before I was in eighth grade, um, seventh, so I was in seventh grade at the time, and my dad was in the hospital with um, a uro, urosepsis, which is a septic infection. It's um, typically known as like blood poisoning, and it results from a bacterial, bacterial infection. And um, so due to that, we usually had home health aid, a home health aid agent, agency that helped take care of him, but he, he was going to, res like require too much care. So um, they ended up kind of dropping us as clients and we mm -hmm. had to find a way for somebody to take care of him because he couldn't be home by himself, like, you know, eight hours in a day. That's just too long for him to be by himself in case something happened. And so I felt like I was capable of being able to take higher level classes. So I talked to my mom about it and um, we decided that I would take a test to see how well I could possibly perform at the college level. And I ended up testing out of my high school classes, all of them. So I was able to just go straight to Ohio State. Um, and that really gave me the flexibility to be able to care for my dad um, since we didn't have a home health aid agency at the time. Wow, that's incredible. Mm -hmm. What was it like to be able to serve your dad in that way? I mean, it was, it's, um, a lot of people look at it as if it could be a burden kind of, and um, in the way that it might have shaped my childhood, um, you know, not really being able to get up and run around with my dad in the yard like a lot of kids do, but I really see it as a blessing um, and a privilege to be able to care for somebody in that way. Uh, you know, not a lot of uh, kids probably, you know, change their dads or organize their medicine or that kind of thing, but it really has shaped my character and shaped who I am today. Um, for sure, just giving God all the glory for everything that he's given me and the opportunities. When you think back to that, growing up with a dad who was progressively declining right. bit by bit throughout the right. years, how did you see God present in your family in that time? Yeah, so um, I mean, I think it's really something that pulled us together a lot. Uh, there's a lot of families that are kind of isolated from one another. And I think the fact that my siblings and I had to, you know, kind of help manage my dad's care along with my mom. It's really something that brought us together, um, you know, something that God has used to motivate each of us to pursue different paths in our lives. Um, and for me, that comes through with, you know, pursuing a career in STEM, um, medicine and that kind of thing. But I think it's really just shown us his glory and the way that he pulls through even when Satan does things to try to destroy us. And we're going to talk more about the path you're on in a little bit. But let's finish the story about your dad. He did pass away yes. a little bit unexpectedly yes. before you entered high school. Right. Um, that, that was actually um, really unfortunate because the reason that I wanted to take college classes in the first place was so that I could take care of my dad. To, you know, I was really looking forward to it. You know, I was, going, I was going to have a flexible schedule, be able to stay home with my dad and take care of him. We were going to hang out all the time, you know, watch movies and that kind of thing. And, um, you know, he passed away really unexpectedly. I remember um, I was just laying on my bed. I think I was reading a book by Ben Carson. He was a neurosurgeon. Mm -hmm. um, and then I, I hear my sister and my mom kind of, you know, 
panicked a little bit. And so I rushed down from my bed and sprinted out to the living room and there I saw my dad and um, you know, he was, he was gone. So it, it was really unfortunate, but um, you know, that moment is something that really inspires me and encourages me to continue pressing on um, because it's something that, I mean, it's something that I'll never forget, honestly. So that happened, and then a few months later, you started your college classes. Right. But you didn't just start college classes. Right. You started for a degree right. in <laughs> biology, a pre-med yes. focus. That's a very intense degree. Yeah, that, it, it is, definitely. Um, I think at the beginning of it, I, I didn't really take super challenging courses, in my opinion. I thought they were really easy. Um, and so now I'm kind of getting into the area where I'm taking a lot of like the organic chemistry classes, mm -hmm. biochemistry and harder classes, but um, it can definitely be challenging for sure. <laughs> so what are your goals now with this degree once you get this finished? What are you hoping to do in the future? Yes, so um, I always knew that I wanted to be a doctor and to be able to care for people. Um, and that a lot of that came from traveling with my parents to the Cleveland Clinic Mellon Center where my dad got uh, treatments for spasticity. He got like baclofen pump refills or Botox injections. Um, and so a lot of it came from that and just seeing the way that doctors really um, improved my dad's quality of life. Um, and then I also decided, I was talking to one of my dad's doctors, Dr. Francois Bay too, one day, and he was explaining to me how Botox actually works and how, you know, scientific research is a great way to be able to help patients in addition to like directly caring for them in a way that a medical doctor does. And so that's something um, that really inspired me to want to be able to get my MD. So, you know, um, medicine and studying medicine and like actually treating patients and to also get a PhD where I can do scientific research and research treatments for multiple sclerosis. All right, I want to remind you all that Lizzie is 17 years old. She is going to be a senior at Delphus Jefferson. Um, she gave up her sports careers she gave up a lot of other things because she felt like this was the path that God had her on. And as a freshman in high school, she started this and now she's moving on. And let's talk about some of the things that you have done. And I might miss some of them and you can, you can fill them in. So in March of 2020, you were, this is according to uh, her information that I found online, um, you were in the iGEM I competition internship. Now, what yes. was that? So iGEM um, is a synthetic biology competition, and it stands for International Genetically Engineered Machines. And so it's kind of a way of, uh, you know, genetics are what kind of give us certain traits and allow us to behave in a certain way and kind of connect us to one another. And it's a way of basically modifying genes. Uh, usually, um, the, well, the research that I specifically did were in bacteria um, and microbiology fields. And so um, that was kind of geared toward engineering bacteria to be able to, um, you know, do beneficial things for humans and to kind of leverage those techniques uh, for human health and benefit. Now, how did you get connected to an internship like that? So I always knew that I wanted to do research. Um, like I said, after I talked with Dr. Bay too, it was something that I knew I wanted to do. Um, and so I was kind of looking for opportunities already uh, in emails and stuff. So the university sends out emails and those contain different information and things that you can sign up for. And I saw a newsletter for it and I thought to myself, oh, well, this seems like something really cool, something I'd be interested in. I really like studying genetics and synthetic biology. And so I decided to apply for it. I went down to Columbus and interviewed for it and then I got accepted to the team. So <laughs> <laughs> it was um, a really great um, experience, I'd say. So are you, is it common for there to be other teenagers in, in a team like this or are you finding yourself to be the youngest one? Um, I am the youngest one on the team for Ohio State, but there are other high school iGym teams. Of course, I didn't go for a high school iGym team, so I was the youngest one on the team, but there are high schoolers that participate in iGym on high school iGym teams. And so is this something you're still doing now? Yes, with the I, college? I'm doing their 2021 team. Yes, okay. as well. And are there competitions? Are there things that you do as well with this kind of thing? Yes. Uh, usually there's a competition in person called the Jamboree. Um, it was supposed to be in Boston last year, but it got canceled because of mm -hmm. COVID. This year, if it's if it is in person, it will be in Paris, France. So really, that'll be that'll be <laughs> awesome. Really exciting opportunity. Yeah. Well, that's pretty good. All right. Well, let's move on to the next thing that I saw okay. on your LinkedIn uh, resume. May of 2020, you started to be involved in the OSU MIT Solve Challenge Team. Yes. So what is that? Now we're talking MIT is 
as right. well, too. Right. So um, there, there's a competition that MIT kind of hosts with other sponsors, and it's called MIT Solve. Um, that's really a way of looking at um, kind of engineering technologies that we can use for different purposes in the world. And there are um, different categories, but um, our specific project was kind of focused on viral detection systems. And so um, we were kind of using, like kind of coming up with an idea of using, you know, gold-plated nanoparticles and that kind of thing for uh, viral detection systems. But um, I mean, we didn't actually really place for that. That was kind of just like a fun thing to do, mm -hmm. kind of brainstorming. But it was a, another good experience for kind of, you know, getting your brain to think in a certain mm -hmm. way with a kind of geared towards engineering. Yeah, what's the value? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Engineering, a little different. What's, what's the value of being in these teams and being able to work with? with other individuals. I'm mm -hmm. sure there's networking there, but also oh, absolutely. but also other things too. Absolutely. So um, iGym, one of my favorite things about it is obviously, you know, getting to learn more about science, which I, I love so much. Um, and then the other thing is that there are, there, like you said, there's a lot of networking that goes into it as well. So with iGym, there are specific requirements for the competition that you need in order to place high enough. And so one of those is actually collaboration. Um, and so, you know, this is an international competition. So there are teams from all over the world um, that you're meeting up with and collaborating with. And so, you know, I've gotten the opportunity to meet with people from Mexico, India, I mean, I mean, everywhere in the world that, I, that um, you could think of probably, and gotten to talk with them about science and to just kind of hear their perspectives based off of, you know, their upbringing and their culture from where they live. Um, and so it's a really great opportunity to be able to network with people. And of course, I mean, with these being engineering and science focused, it's a great way to be able to fine tune your critical thinking skills uh, and to be able to apply those to different situations. Excellent. Moving on, it's not done. She's <laughs> doing more things here, everybody. In September, everybody says that nothing happened in 2020. Well, Lizzie did a lot of stuff in 2020. <laughs> September 2020 it says undergraduate student researcher for Ohio State. Yes, so that was, um, I. Like I said, I'm very interested in researching multiple sclerosis. And so which is what her which is what her father had, yes, by the way. Yes, and yeah. that's that's why I'm interested in researching in it, just seeing the way that it impacted him and you know, kind of looking for ways to be able to prevent other people from having to go through that. Um, and so I decided that I was going to email um, a professor at Ohio State that worked on multiple sclerosis. I, I didn't know them, they didn't know me. I was just like, I'm gonna code email them and we're gonna see how this goes. Um, and so um, I emailed them, asked is there anything that I can do to kind of learn more about multiple sclerosis and learn more about your research? And they responded and said, yeah, sure, I'm sure that we have something that you can do online because the labs weren't open to undergrads or high school students at the time. And so I ended up being able to do some neuron quantification for them. And so um, it's kind of looking at how neurons might regenerate after injury. Um, you know, in multiple sclerosis, it's an autoimmune disease where the immune system attacks neurons and attacks myelin in the um, central nervous system. And so it's really interesting to be able to kind of research ways to reverse that damage or to kind of heal that damage. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of what I was looking at, but just kind of looking at the results of what they were actually doing in lab. Because it really gets your mind ticking. It when does. You see these kind of it, it does. It's amazing. <laughs> Just everything that's happening in science is it's remarkable. <laughs> so then, in August of 2020, well, I guess September, August, around the same time, you were also an undergraduate intern in the Department of Chemical Engineering with MIT. Yes. So um, once again, so for iGym, uh, you also have to do a math modeling component, and so I was doing some mathematical modeling for them, um, modeling you know bacterial gene expression systems. And so um, I, I stumbled across this web page for Dr. Katie Galloway at MIT, and she had some really cool gene expression equations on there that I was using for my project. And I ended up, um, I was kind of looking for more opportunities around that time, things that I really felt like God was leading me to. And so I, f I found this web page, and I started reading more about her, and I, I came to find that she was actually a Christian as well, a Christian researcher at MIT. And so I, I kind of prayed about it before I ended up messaging her. But um, ultimately, I messaged her because I felt like God was leading me to do that. And she responded to me and said, I'm sure that you can participate virtually with um, the rest of our Europe's because once again, everything was virtual at that time. Um, and so I ended up uh, being able to work with them uh, last semester and I'm also um, continuing my work with them. So I've worked with them the fall semester, spring semester, and I'm con 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 continuing my work with them. Um, and so uh, that was another really great opportunity where I got exposed to another field that I was kind of unfamiliar with. 
haven't done too much with chemical engineering before, but um, it was a really great experience again, just getting to learn about that and be surrounded by those people. And I imagine again, that's more thinking patterns, more information that maybe doesn't directly correlate with what you're doing, but in some ways mm -hmm. will help you in the end. Oh, absolutely. I mean, science is so interdisciplinary. It's not like you need to just, um, you know, some people specialize in certain things, which is good. Um, you know, th we need to have specialists and stuff. But I think that um, I really love interdisciplinary work, being able to take things from physics and biology and chemistry and combining them all together, not just being a biologist or a chemist or a physicist, but kind of just, you know, combining all of those different fields together to shape my thinking. And we'll talk about your future in just a little bit, but you've got another internship going on. <laughs> um, this is with another name yes. that you might have heard, Harvard. <sighs> She's doing an internship with Harvard right now. She's in class multiple hours in the day and doing amazing research right now. And this right. just started recently. Right, that did start recently. So um, in the spring semester, I was once again looking for more opportunities to do over the summer because there are specific research programs for undergraduates that only go over the summer at different universities that you can apply to. And so I found this one, it was for computational biology and biostatistics. And I thought that's something that really interests me, um, especially with math modeling and just science overall, so I decided to apply to it. Um, luckily, my research mentor from MIT and from Ohio State, they were both willing to give me letters of recommendation, so I have to thank them for that. Um, and I was accepted to the program, um, placed with a research mentor at, mentor at Harvard, uh, Dr. Rafael Arizari, and I've been doing some research in math modeling um, and coding to kind of look at COVID-19 cases, uh, COVID-19 vaccinations and um, kind of on a global scale. So it's very interesting work. So you're doing <laughs> the current information. Yes, the right, current right. stuff yes. that everybody's looking at right now or, right. or needs to be looking at right. to see how things are working and you are right there in the middle of it. Exactly, and kind of looking at that data to be able to translate it to the public so that it makes sense to everybody and not just make something that makes sense to me. So yeah. So a few minutes ago you mentioned how you prayed and and that, right. that you felt like God led you to message this person and that. But you know, in, in medicine, not everybody we meet is a Christian. Right. But it sounds like God is definitely directing you in mm -hmm. what you are doing. Oh, yeah, he is, absolutely. I mean, he's, like I said, my um, research mentor at, MI, um, at MIT is also a Christian. And so I'm very fortunate that I've been able to kind of work under her. Um, she's definitely one of my biggest role models, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Just being able to see how amazing she is with, you know, science and also with her faith and walking in that. And, um, you know, I have to say that um, I wouldn't even be in science or medicine if it wasn't for God's hand on my life or his guidance. So, I mean, to me, it's like, why wouldn't I give God all the glory? I mean, he's the only reason that I'm here right now, so. <laughs> and your dad, a pastor. Right. Um, so even, you know, there was a point when he couldn't be up doing the things, but right. the presence of God, oh. I know, has always been oh, evident yeah. in your household and in your family. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Um, and also, you know, in the hospitals and the nursing homes and all of those things, I mean, it's been, it's been everywhere. It's in, like, increasingly evident in my life, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, I hope that when people see me, they see Jesus' light shining from me. Well, I did see a light shining in you when I was watching your YouTube oh. uh, Doc Talk podcast earlier today. Another thing, because you just have, you just have, you know, you probably have even more time, on, tons of time on your hands. Oh yeah, tons of it. <laughs> so you started the Doc Talk podcast. Right. And if you go to her Facebook page, which is the Doc Talk page, you'll find really neat graphics that explain things like how a rainbow is created or other very interesting things. So tell right. me about this. So um, I, I do enjoy podcasts myself. I like listening to them and the information that they can give you, especially if you're on the go or something, you know, in your car, you can listen to a podcast and all of those different things. So um, it's something that I wanted to do um, also because of my work with iGym again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so another part of that is um, being able to communicate your science to the public and to create educational materials. And so um, I really enjoyed kind of, you know, making things like that and being able to educate other people and help them understand things that maybe seem kind of strange or don't make sense. And I thought that a great way to do that would be to interview people in STEM, you know, even in fields that I'm unfamiliar with. Um, and to kind of gain their insight um, on, you know, what does it take to become a scientist, um, to be successful in medicine and STEM and all of these things, while also getting, um, you know, them to talk about their current research and to explain that to people that are listening. 
And so that's been a really great opportunity, once again, for me to network with people, mm -hmm. um, for me to just be able to learn more and to kind of take the advice that they give because I'm, I say, you know, even if nobody else is listening to it, I'm listening to it right now. So it's been something that's really, um, you know, I just started it maybe two or three months ago or something like that. But it's been something that's really been, um, had a good influence on me um, individually, just being able to learn from all of these people. And if you haven't had a chance to see that, the information is on the screen for the address, the web address, to be able to check out those episodes of Lizzie Chung's Doc Talk podcast. The Facebook page and the YouTube page are right there for you to check out. All right, as we talked about at the beginning, you're 17 years old. You're going to be a senior at Delta Jefferson, but you're also going to graduate with your bachelor's in science. So what's next? You know, a lot of people, they graduate with their four-year degree and they're finished. Right. But you are not close to being finished, are you? Oh, no, not even close, actually. <laughs> so um, after I graduate, I'm hoping to go to an MD-PhD program. And so that would give me the opportunity to once again be able to get my MD to be a doctor and to treat patients and also get my, MD, uh, my PhD so that I can, um, you know, do scientific research, you know, in the lab, uh, do math modeling and all of those things to be able to create treatments for my patients. And so um, I'm currently looking at applying to two main schools, which are Harvard Medical School and Johns Hopkins Medical School um, MD PhD programs. Um, and the really nice thing about that is actually if you get accepted to those programs, they will pay for your tuition for all. It will be an eight year program because mm -hmm. four years for my MD four years for a PhD, and, but they'll pay for all of my tuition and everything. And on top of that, they also um, give their students a stipend each year. Um, I mean, it's, it's nothing huge, but I mean, like, it's better than nothing, right? right. And so um, that um, is kind of where I'm looking to go next, getting my MD, PhD. So that's a lot. Yes. <laughs> that's a lot to think about. It is. Yeah. But it look is. at the smile on your face. Yes. And as I think about your dad and everything that you grew up with, mm -hmm. uh, with him, and I could imagine just how proud and happy as he can see all you've become. What is your hope for the future? Um, when you think about, when you do that research and you think about the potential, could there be a cure for MS in the future? What, what could you discover for people in the future? Well, um, I say my hope, um, but honestly, I, I, it's kind of something that I feel like I know because of things that God has revealed to me. Um, I we'll say this um, now and then we can look back um, in a few years or something. <laughs> I will, with God's help and guidance, uh, cure MS. Um, I will, you know, be a neurosurgeon and be able to help people in that way. And I hope to be able to also, you know, give opportunities to other people for learning more about science and getting involved in STEM and um, those things. So I, I also want to combine that with, you know, apologetics work to be able to really see how science and faith intersect. I think a lot of the time people, you know, kind of isolate those two things, but they are combined completely in my head. I mean, when I, um, you know, study science and then I study my faith, I see all of the intersections between those two things. Um, and so I want to also show other people that as well, to just look at how science and faith really are more similar than what we might currently think. Mm -hmm. Lizzie Chung. Phenomenal information. You're doing great things. Thank you. <laughs> and I'm so glad you're willing to share that with us. Absolutely. You at home, I got a request of you. Would you be praying for this incredible young lady? She's got a lot of things she's doing now, but God has some great plans for her in the future. So would you maybe write down her name and think about praying for her as she's finishing this year and then she's listening for God's direction as she goes into next year and the years to come. Or the years to come. Uh, Amazing stuff. Lizzie, thanks so much for joining us here at TV44 yes. for this interview. Absolutely. Thank you. Isn't she incredible? It was so enjoyable to talk with Lizzie. Her faith and her medical knowledge just astounded me. The Chung family also includes her mother, Angie Chung Kirby, brother Cooper, sister Alexa, and a recent addition, stepfather Dan Kirby. And she credits her smarts to her grandpa, Thomas McKee. Do you know a phenomenal individual who has an amazing testimony to share? Email me your ideas at jbeck at wtlw.com. Again, that's jbeck at wtlw.com. I'm Jennifer Beck. Thanks for watching this special TV44 in the community presentation. <music>